Hey, everybody. Welcome to this 41st episode of the REBT Advocates. I'm Tommy Bateman, and with me is Dr. Michael R. Edelstein, as always. You can find us at our respective websites. Michael is at 3MinuteTherapy.com, and I am at TheRationalCounselor.com. You can see these hyperlinks below. Now, today, we last time we talked about, in the previous two episodes, we mentioned finding the A, B, and C, kind of in a more advanced REBT. Uh, type feel, and we're going to continue that today, starting with D, and we're going to go through F today. So, Michael, uh, starting with D, why would you give us our take on that? Okay, uh, D is once you come up with the A, B, C, B is the irrational belief. So, uh, we're scientists, we like to look for evidence. So, D gives us that opportunity where we ask for the evidence for B. So if B is, I absolutely must have your approval, and I'm no good if you disapprove of me, then uh, D is simply a, a question. It's B, the irrational belief, just putting what is the evidence in front of it. What is the evidence? I absolutely must have your approval, and I'm no good if I, you reject me. Uh, now, we're regarding B as a hypothesis, and we have open minds, so we would like to see if there's evidence for that hypothesis. That's the purpose of D. Now, if you're more comfortable with why must I have your approval, or what is the data I must have your approval, or prove to me I must have your approval, I'm talking to myself when I say prove to me, I must have your approval. Uh, that's fine as well. Uh, now, uh, this, this D that I explained to new clients is very simple and it's pretty clear. Uh, most clients find it clear. But Tommy, you have another D for clients who are uh, practice doing the three minute exercise, which is a little more advanced. So why don't you explain yours? Okay, well, and I don't think this is something you don't do as well. Um, D is like my favorite part of REBT because I'm, I, I just enjoy disputing. I, I enjoy uh, fleshing things apart and asking philosophical questions, getting deep into evidence and things like that. So Michael, when, uh, he, he phrased it as, why the B? So why must I, uh, must life be uh, always grand? Why must, it, why must I always have good feelings? You know, that's, that's how we dispute that. I like to take it further. That's this is the meat of my uh, REBT therapy is in the D. So let's say we use the uh, example of you're experiencing withdrawal symptoms from drugs, and so you think your your irrational B is I must not experience withdrawal. That is uncomfortable and it's awful. I can't stand it. So that's when I start just arguing away. And I like uh, Michael calls this arguing till you win. Till you win. Um, I've heard him refer to it in his book Three Minute Therapy. Buy it. Um, that uh, arguing until you win, and that's what I do. I argue with myself, or I argue with my clients, or my client, my clients argue with me until we get to an uh, an end point where somebody wins. Um, so, where is the evidence that life must be easy? Um, okay, well, there doesn't seem to be any. Um, life seems to promise a lot of pain. In fact, you've experienced pain. Where's the evidence that this is 100% subject? Oh, excuse me, objectively awful. We get into an argument about that, and you can't stand it. Uh, you seem to be standing it right now. We get into an argument, no, friendly argument, okay? I'm not saying I'm like browbeat these people, even though I occasionally do. I kind of do that sometimes, but they like it, I think. Um, and, and we get to a, a, an end point. We get to a point where there is a place where no one can argue. There's no evidence for or against the position that, or excuse me, no evidence against the position we ended up on. And that's what I call our new E. Now, I don't want to uh, get ahead, Michael, um, but so the end of the argument until you, until you win is our E. So uh, let's start on that. What, what is the E for you? Actually, uh, thanks, Tommy, and thanks for that explanation. And it really highlights a few things, and that is when you do the three-minute exercises, the bottom line is that it's what you write is meaningful for you. Mm -hmm. So if Tommy's version is meaningful to you, use that. If my simple or simple version is meaningful to you, use that. Uh, some of my clients bypass both, and jump to E. If that works best for you, that's fine. This is uh, sort of like the backbone of it. And then once you understand it, 
then uh, adapt it to your own uh, personality and proclivities. Uh, also, thanks for bringing up the debating until you win. It's debating until you win in three-minute therapy. And if you have the book, you can look in the index under debating until you win, and you can see some examples in the book. Now, getting on to E, E stands for effective new thinking or effective new philosophy, and that simply means the answer to the question. So uh, if you come up with evidence for your must or should, make a note of it, send us an email, and uh, we'll publish it in Ripley's Believe It or Not, because we never saw any evidence for these psychopathological demands, these musts and shoulds, they're fictions, they don't exist. So you can write things like that in E, again, if it's meaningful, it makes sense, such as, although I greatly prefer life to be easy, there's no reason it absolutely must be. Or although I prefer to have your approval, there's no evidence I absolutely need your approval. It is unfortunate when I have hassles, hardships, discomfort, and frustrations, but hardly the end of the universe. I've survived this comfort before, and I'll survive it again. And as you said at D, um, I, I am standing the discomfort right now, so obviously I can. And then uh, you can also remind yourself of the BC connection. In other words, that it's your beliefs that causes your upset, not the situation at A. So at E, you could say, it's not my hassles and discomfort at A that causes my procrastination or addictions or depression, but rather it's my fictional absolutistic must about it that's a problem. And with practice, I can change my thinking. And I can live happily with frustration, with discomfort, with your disapproval, although I may be happier uh, without your disapproval or discomfort. So those are some possible E's. Would you like to add anything to that, Tommy? Yeah, when it comes to E, so we have, an, it stands for effective new uh, thinking. The thing is, it doesn't need to be perfect new thinking, right? So we argued until we win doesn't mean we are, it's absolutely true or it has no flaws, but um, we can't find evidence against it at this time. Now we may come down the road and run into a hink and go, oh, wait a minute, this doesn't quite work. But now I have new evidence that this doesn't quite work. However, we have plenty of evidence to say that absolutistic thinking doesn't work. These musts, shoulds, have tos, need tos doesn't necessarily work when it comes to our emotional life. Um, however, we may come to uh, some other thinking uh, in, down the road that works for a time and is better than the absolutistic thinking you had before, but may not be right. But that's the great thing about trial and error. We, uh, we replace that to the, that's our new B, and we're going to dispute with that new one because we ran into a little hink um, until we get an, an even more effective E, uh, E-M-E, even more effective E. Uh, so uh, yeah, take, uh, take a look at that. Okay, and then uh, we go on to F. F is your new feeling or behavior once you internalize what you wrote at E, and that'll take some doing, and we'll explain in a minute how to do that. But once you do internalize it, deeply feel it and believe it, uh, and the it is your preferences, but no must, no shoulds, then F could be in new emotions, and they would still often be in a negative motions, emotions because if things go poorly, then uh, there's no reason to feel happy or positive about it. So emotions such as frustration, but not depression, or concern, not anxiety, or discomfort, but not um, depression or anxiety. So those are some possible uh, F's, new feelings, and then some new behaviors would be, uh, could be alternate behaviors, such as I had a Coke instead of a beer, or I went to bed instead of uh, staying up all night uh, watching videos, or it could just be living with the feeling, feel the feeling, 
or uh, something along those lines. So there are uh, a number of alternatives for F. Yeah, I, I, what I really like about that is, um, and, and sometimes people criticize REBT as being pie in the sky thinking. No, it's, uh, it's, it's not that at all. Uh, the, the effect of new feeling doesn't, as Michael said, doesn't have to be um, happy go lucky. I don't care what's, uh, oh, I'm being tortured. Yay, I'm having a great time. It's, it's rather, um, you know, the difference between pain and suffering. Now, of course, we mentioned you know, it could still be negative, but there's such a thing as inappropriate uh, positive emotions. Uh, let's, uh, let's like say high self-esteem. Um, we have an argument about that. You can go look into our previous episodes about that one, but if it's based in an irrational belief, it's an inappropriate emotion. So uh, uh, pay attention to that as well. So there are some distinctives there. Okay, very good. And then uh, sometimes I suggest to G, give yourself a homework assignment. So, for example, if you're dealing with an addiction to alcohol, at G, you could write uh, no alcohol for the next week. Or if, you, if you're dealing with someone's disapproval, you could give yourself a homework assignment. Uh, uh, contact the person and discuss the relationship or have nothing to do with the person again. So those could be behavioral homework assignments. You know, in fact, Michael, uh, since we're teaching people to be their own therapists, um, one of the things that people forget is to give themselves homework. Now, I know in the second episode, we did three-minute therapy, uh, or mistakes therapists make, and that was the number one mistake, giving out homework. So give yourself homework. That can't be understated. Very good. Okay, Tommy, uh, thanks for going through this with me. I appreciate it. And uh, next week, we have a special guest, so stay tuned for that. And uh, please give us a like, and please subscribe to the REBT Advocates to stay on the rational side of life.